Hello everyone, my name is Afton. I am currently an illustration major at the Kansas City Art Institute in my sophomore year and today I will be giving you some tips that I've learned throughout my experience at art school so far so that you can turn your art from looking like this to looking like this. first tip for you is to have a crappy sketchbook. Literally go to the dollar store, find a sketchbook that you will not worry about creating nice art in, and just label that as your crap slash go-to sketchbook for putting down ideas. I feel like too often artists will buy sketchbooks that are nice, like those $20 moleskin sketchbooks, and then have all this pressure to create these really stunning images in them. But the thing is, is that if you allow yourself to have a sketchbook that is just solely for experience, Experimenting, that will really help you loosen up and not worry so much about what you are making. And on that note, sketchbooking is one of the most important things that you will do as an artist to improve your art. Sketchbooking is not only important to just practice drawing, but experimenting with different techniques and putting down color swatches you might want to use in the future, conceptualizing new projects or just getting loose and practicing before you start a big drawing. Think of sketchbooks as your second art brain because your mind can't really hold so many ideas. You'll probably forget them, so write any idea you have in a sketchbook and feel free to reference any of these in the future for whenever you don't know what to draw or you want something to bounce ideas off of. Next, I really wanted to emphasize that you guys should grasp the basics and fundamentals of art making and visual imagery. So shape, color, line, space, value, and learning how to see and break things down. Working on this in the beginning will really help improve your art exponentially as you continue to learn and create. I know these things are a bit more tedious and not as fun to work on, but it's super duper important if you want to improve. So for instance, learning to break things down as simple shapes and learning to be able to draw an image in black and white as values and learning about color theory will help making art easier for you in the future. I'm not going to go through those things in this video, but the way that I learned about these things were by watching YouTube videos, reading books, talking to friends, and kind of putting limitations on yourself. For instance, color can be such a hard, confusing world to navigate, so giving yourself a color palette to use in a drawing will help you focus more on those specific colors and those values within the colors. Breaking things down into simple shapes will also help you work with composition in your art, which is a super duper important aspect to creating. Next, I want to really emphasize drawing from life. I feel like with the world of the internet and Instagram and Pinterest, it is super easy to mainly take your references from screens. But drawing from life allows you to see how things really look in the real world and how color and light changes as time changes. So of course drawing from life will be a bit more difficult than drawing from a screen because your scenery will change, maybe if you're drawing people they'll move around, but this will really help you exercise your observational skills and the space is just different whenever you draw from life versus drawing from a screen. In a screen everything is compressed and made smaller. Whereas when you draw from life, you see things as three-dimensional objects. Next, I wanted to bring up copying for learning. And what I mean by this is studying other artists' work to learn how their process went into making an image. I don't mean to copy an artist's work and say that it's your own or try to copy their style to a T and just replicate their style. So taking an artist that you admire, for instance, Gustav Klimt, and saying, I wonder how Klimt uses these abstract forms in his work to create these really ethereal images. So what I'm going to do is study his composition, study the way that he abstracts images while also using realistic paintings of people, and see what I can learn from that. And by doing studies of different artists' work, you'll really help learn overall about composition and shape and the way that you can abstract form and just get a deeper appreciation for how this artist created what they did. I would also like you guys to drop the idea of trying to find your art style as if it's this mystical hidden thing that once you find it, your art will be perfect and everything will be cohesive because really that's not how art works. Your art style, quote, art style, will be developing for the rest of your artistic practice. 
So what I would advise you guys to do is think about it more as building a visual language and exploring different ways to make images. In creating a visual library, such as an artboard on Pinterest, you can find what you are drawn to and what different things you would like to explore. For instance, my Pinterest is full of illustration art and abstracted illustrations of people or places or art that contains different colors I like. And if you create a library of inspiration, then that's one way that you'll really discover what aesthetic that you're drawn to instead of trying to find this one very specific, very narrow style. Next, I would like to tell you guys to not draw the same thing. Draw multiple things, vary what you draw. For instance, if you mainly draw people, try drawing drawing animals or if you mainly draw say cartoons and anime stuff and my little pony like I did in middle school try drawing realistically or try drawing even in a style that you think you would see in editorials or children's books which still can be kind of more whimsical cartoony doodles but it's in a different aesthetic. I think it's really important to draw things for practice. Say in a page of your sketchbook you just draw different cars and you study what cars look like and then you draw houses and then you draw mailboxes and then you draw lamps so on and so forth because I think and of course this is I'm a little biased I am an illustrator and as illustrators you want to be able to draw everything so yeah if you want to draw everything just really study what things look like and also conceptualize for yourself what different things could look like too I think using references are perfectly okay but being able to also invent new images for yourself is a really useful skill as an artist Okay, so this next tip is one that's a bit more specific, but it's to not overblend. One thing that I see with beginner artists and just kind of early work is too much blending and not enough focusing on creating contrast. I think contrast is one thing that you can use in your work to help draw the eye to what you are working on and to create a more finished look. If you are drawing a person, for instance, on Procreate or another digital art service and you want to blend the skin tones together, I think that's okay, but just make sure to go back and and define things through contrast of light and shadow. One thing that I think is left out in the beginning of an art process is to work on both the technical and conceptual together. I don't mean that every art piece that you make or every sketch in your sketchbook has to have this really deep or dark meaning, but put more of an emphasis on the why you are creating. So for instance, why am I painting this flower? Because I think it is beautiful and I want to look at the transparency of the leaves whenever you shine light through it. I'd say that can be conceptual because it's not just drawing plainly what you see, but it's adding more layers of meaning and reasoning to why you are making something in the first place. Or maybe you see something and think of a story behind it. I think one way that helps build the conceptual in artwork is to study art history, which I know can really be a snooze. Especially whenever I began studying it, I was like, wow, this stuff is really, really boring. But then you get more into it and you're like, whoa, there's so much history and culture behind artwork. And it's really interesting just to learn about the politics and the influence that art has had over the years. My next and probably biggest tip is to work with different media. So for instance, if you mainly do drawing, try doing some photography. I think this will really help with seeing things from a new perspective and, you know, sometimes for instance with drawing, like you're creating an image from nothing, whereas photography, you have somewhere to go from. And I think photography just in general helps you play with compositions and play with lighting and play with contrast in a way that is very quickly responsive and maybe you take a photo of something and then you decide to draw it you know what I mean like being able to use different media and bounce one way of creating with another I think really takes your art to the next level and it doesn't have to be just photography I think working with fibers material or sewing can really help see patterns differently or see the way that material moves and creating an outfit you still use the same principles but it's just in different ways seeing how forms relate to the body rather than how forms relate to a piece of paper but overall I'd say really let yourself be loose and experiment in the beginning stages. I think it's so easy to just find images online and just try to copy it until you feel like you've reached a style like theirs, but 
being able to just have fun and doodle and create wacky illustrations or characters or experiment just to see what creating a drawing only out of lines or squares would look like will really expand your overall skills. All right, guys, again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like more art tips, just leave a like and comment down below. Make sure to subscribe to see more of my artistic journey and let me know what you thought about these tips and if you have any other ideas that may help people. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.